Okay, so now that we go to an example, example four. So payments at uh, payments are made the continuously at the rate of ft. ft is equal to 100 times 1 plus t for t from 0 to 8. Maybe I will say the 0 to t, uh, 0 to 8. And the interest is accumulated at the force of interest, 1 over 10 plus 10 t. So this is delta t. So calculate the present value and also accumulated value at time eight and the total amount of payments. So present value is of course at t is equal to zero and accumulated value is t is equal to eight. Total amount, it doesn't consider the interest and just I would like to, we would like to see how much we receive. So for this kind of a little bit abstract question that it's good that to realize that what's happening in reality. So payment is most um, intuitive quantity. So we think about the payment first. So this is the rate pay per year. So dollar per year. So this is continuous payment. So 100, so basically t is equal to zero. When t is equal to zero, f of t is equal to 100. So I put 100 here t is equal to 8, then the f of t is equal to 100 times 1 plus 8. So that is 900. So 300, 600, 900. So 900 is here. So t is equal to 0 is here. And the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if t is equal to 8, the payment rate is 8 and 900. And the in between, that should be a linear function. So that this is the payment rate. So this is y is equal to f of t. Yeah, and this is t is equal to zero, and this is 900. Okay. And okay, so uh, until t. And then interest rate also changes. Oh, uh, before that, the, we can calculate that actually the total amount of payment here. So we would mention later, but the total amount is area. So you can imagine that if the, you have constantly the $300 per year and you receive eight years, then that is the 300 times eight. So 2,400 $2, So it's the same as the, uh, it's the same way, even if the FT is not a constant function. So this area, so this area, total amount is this area. So you can see that this is the trapezoid uh, with the base of um, 100 and 900. And then the height is eight. So the area is equal to the 100 plus 900 uh, divided by two times the um, height. Height is eight and it, um, yes. So this is equal to 4,000. So the total payment is 4,000. But we have interest. So that means the present value is smaller than 4,000 and the accumulated value is larger than 4,000. What is the interest rate? So interest rate is the given as the force of interest and the, um, that is one plus one over 10 plus 10 T. So if T is equal to zero, T is equal to zero, then this is one over 10. So that is 10%. So three, five, eight, 10. So this is 10. So 10 is 0, 10 percent is 0 0.1. And the, at time zero, the interest rate is 10 percent. How about time eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so at time eight, the, if you plug in eight here, that is the one over 90. So one over 90 is the 0 0.011, 1 1.1%, 1 uh, it's pretty small. So around here. So 0.111, that is the interest at time eight. 
And in between, we have this function. So this function is the hyperbola. Hyperbola, so the, uh, it's not linear. So the, it decays like this, probably. In the beginning, it's first, and later, it's slower. So that means um, between 1% and 10%. So can you guess present value? So I, it's always good to guess the answer. So one is the, to get the, uh, um, you know, the overall picture of the problem. And the other is that the uh, exam is multiple choice. The actuarial exam is multiple choice. So that it's good to make a guess. Then we can exclude some choices. Also, you can avoid the, um, to make mistake in calculation. So if the amount is totally different than you imagined, probably that you made a mistake to calculate it. So $4,000 um, $4, is the uh, total payment. So present value, um, okay, so the amount is in the account on average, I don't know, maybe five years, something, because the more payments are in later years. And maybe, okay, so suppose five years and the interest rate 10% to 1%, maybe on average, maybe three or 4%. Okay, 4%, five years, the 20%. So maybe we have 20% discount from 4,000. So maybe 3,200, maybe that is a rough estimate. And we can check. And accumulated value, this should be larger than $4,000 and probably not much larger than $4,000 because most payments are in later years and the later year, in later years, the interest rate is very low. So that means probably that we only have a slightly larger value than $4,000. Yeah, so, okay, so that we can start uh, from any uh, question, actually total amount we have already got, but okay, so now that we calculate the accumulated value of the payment. So payment between T and the T plus Delta, so suppose this is T and this is T plus Delta T. Then accumulated value of this payment, this payment. So we accumulate the interest from T to eight. Accumulate interest from T, maybe between T and T plus Delta T and eight. So actually this is approximately E to the power integral t to eight, the delta r dr times the f of t delta, delta, delta t here. So that means the accumulated value is equal to integral the zero to eight because the payment is from a zero to eight and then this amount. So e to the power, the t to eight, delta r dr times f of t dt. So this is a complicated function. So sometimes we cannot really, uh, you know, analytically solve this, but uh, okay, so let um, try, let us, let's try to integrate it. T to eight, and the force of interest is the one over 10 plus 10 T. So we put one over 10 plus 10 T and DT, maybe it's good to use different symbol R, DR. Then the F of T, F of T is 100 times one plus T DT. Okay, so now we continue to calculate this. So, um, okay, so this is the zero to eight. And okay, so e to the power one over 10 plus 10 R. So we can put one over 10 before integral that makes it easier. And the T to eight, one over one plus R. Then you can see this becomes logarithm after taking after uh, making, doing the integral. So the 
times the 100 times 1 plus t times delta t. So this is the 0 to 8. Um, still, the e to the power 1 over 10. Then this part is the logarithm of 1 plus r. So we put the log of 1 plus r. And we plug in 8 and r. And that is it. Then after that, the 100 times 1 plus t times delta t, dt. Okay. So now we can plug in numbers. Uh, 0 to 8. And if you plug in 8, that becomes log of 9. And if we plug in R, then, sorry, T. If we plug in T, then it becomes log of 1 plus T. So that means the um, e to the power 1 tenth times log of nine. Here, the log is natural logarithm minus the log of one plus t. Then 100 times one plus t delta t. So now we want to simplify this. So, okay, so 100 is just a constant. So you can, of course, put here. And then e to the power one tenth times log of nine, e of log of nine is nine. E and log are inverse functions each other. So that means that this becomes just the nine to the power one tenth. So this is constant, right? Then um, remaining part. So how about the remaining part? You can see that the e to the power one tenth times negative of log of one plus t, but the e of e to the power log of one plus t is one plus t. So that becomes one plus t to the power negative one tenth. So that means the one plus t to the power negative one tenth. And then, oh, sorry, that we have to integrate this from zero to eight. One plus t dt. So, uh -huh. so we found that, okay, so these two functions are both one plus t. Okay, so just the, uh, I made the uh, question uh, in that way so that we can easily integrate it. So this becomes um, 100 times, um, this is just a constant time, so 100 times nine to the power one tenth, that's fine. Then 100, uh, one plus t to the power 0 0.9. Okay, so if we combine this, then this becomes one plus t to the power 0 0.9. So if we integrate it, then this becomes one plus t to the power 1.9. So this is just power function. So this is one plus t to the power 1.9, but the, uh, we have to put 1.9 over one, one over 1.9, uh, before this, then the, um, this is the antiderivative of this the, uh, one plus t to the power 0 0.9. So we plug in eight and zero here. So that you can see that this, okay, so at first we just uh, calculate the, um, maybe, um, maybe this part, so this constant part. So this becomes 65.565. So 65.565 and times we plug in eight. So that means the nine to the power 1.9 and plug in zero, one to the power 1.9, that is one. So this is one. So you can calculate this and this becomes 4,197.61. So we can see that the, uh, this is slightly larger than $4,000. Okay, so this is the accumulated value. So how about the um, present value? So present value, we can do the same thing. So the, um, the basically the, we have to consider this the small amount, the shadowed area, and we have to consider the present value of this one. But anyway, we integrate it. So we can use the formula. So PV is, integral zero to n, e to the power negative integral zero to t, delta r, the dr, f of t dt. 
So present value of this payment is equal to 0 to 8. And e to the power negative integral, the 0 to t, delta r dr times the 100 times 1 plus t. This is f of t, this payment rate dt. So basically, the, this part has been changed, but the other part remain the uh, remain the same. So uh, just the, uh, after that, the, it's just a matter of calculation. So zero to eight, then um, we have to plug in. So e to the power negative the zero t, the delta r is one over ten times the one over one plus r, the dr times the one hundred times one plus t dt. So it's it looks slightly complicated, but uh, um, you can just do step by step. 0 to 8 e to the power negative 1 tenths integral the 1 over 1 plus r dr then times 100 times 1 plus t dt then uh, this becomes um, okay so we put 100 before integral then uh, 0 to 8 okay so we take the logarithm so the, this part um, so integral, so this part, oh, this is from zero to t. So this part becomes the log of one plus r, log of one plus r, and we plug in t. So we plug in zero also, but if we plug in zero, that becomes zero, log of one is zero. So actually this becomes just the log of one plus t. So this entire integral, I mean, the uh, on the exponent, this becomes, log of one plus t. So that means the uh, e to the power, the negative the one tenth times the uh, log of one plus t. So e to the power log of one plus t is equal to one plus t. So just one plus t remains. So one plus t to the power negative one tenth. So one plus t to the power negative one tenth, um, then uh, times one plus t. Okay, so again, the, you can see that we have almost the same um, function as the one appeared for the accumulated value. So the 100 times uh, 0 to 8, um, maybe we can just summarize it. So this is 1 plus t to the power uh, 0 0.9. So that becomes um, 1 plus t to the power 1.9. So uh, this becomes 1, 1 over 1 plus 1.9 times the 1 plus t to the power 1.9 and the plug in 8 and 0. So this becomes 100 over 1.9 times, okay, we plug in 8, so um, 9 to the power 1.9 and plug in 0, that is 1, so the 1, okay. So then we can get this answer. So this is the 3,300 um, 69.58. We have guessed that the uh, present value is around 20% discount from accumulated value, so 3,200, and it's actually the close, not too far away. So this is the present value. So now that we calculated the present value and also accumulated value, and the total payment is 4,000, 4, it's in between because payment is made between time zero and time eight. And the PV and AV have the relationship. So AV is at time eight and the PV is at time zero. So that means the PV is equal to, uh, maybe I would say it's better to say, AV is equal to A of eight over A of zero times PV. So A is the um, accumulated uh, accumulation function. Um, so um, A0 becomes A8 at time eight. So the AV and the PV uh, has this relationship. So AV is accumulates the eight years of interest uh, compared to PV. So you can verify that if this, uh, um, so um, yeah, we can verify that if this the equation is true. So what is the A8 over A of zero? 
so A8 uh, over A of zero. So this is the uh, accumulated interest. So the, um, this means the um, what's the this this means the multiplier um, of the um, PV um, to make AV. So the, this is the exponential of the zero to eight. So delta R dr. So we have studied in chapter one that the, uh, if we accumulate interest from zero to eight at, at the force of interest of delta R, then the um, ratio becomes this. So yeah, so this, the eight and the zero corresponds to this eight and zero. So this is from chapter one. Okay, so then uh, what's this value? So this is e to the power zero to eight and one over the 10 plus 10 R times dr. This is the force of interest. So we calculate this. So um, one tenth is just a constant. So one tenth and a zero eight and the one over one plus R dr. So this is equal to um, e to the power one tenth um, times the log of one plus r and we plug in eight and zero. So if we plug in zero, log of one is zero. So yes, just we plug in eight, then that becomes nine to the power one tenth. Because e to the power log of nine is just nine. So nine to the power one tenth. So this becomes 1.2457. And in fact, if we multiply this with PV, we can get AV. In fact, the PV times 1.2457 is PV was 3,369.58. Yeah, 69.58 and times 1.2457. So this becomes the 4,197.61. And actually this corresponds to, this it, uh, coincides with the accumulated value. So you can see the PV and AV has the relationship and the relationship is this. And the, finally, the total payment. So total payment is integral, the zero to eight, the FT, DT. So that was the, um, this, the trapezoid, the area of trapezoid. And so this is 100 and this is 900 and the time is zero to eight. So this is equal to 100 plus 900 over two times eight as we discussed, so $4,000. So now we got the total payment and the accumulated value and present value.